Kutam Ilunu Dizuamid. Yes, welcome back to Channel Glazes. So, I reviewed the footage, and it would appear that I did, in fact, recommend Catton become our new Baroness. Stupid fat fingers. What's worse is that this would apparently count as one of those pivotal moments in history, and undoing it could cause the fabric of reality to be devoured by the moths of chaos. Now, I've only recently cleared an infestation of the termites of Avaris, so I'm not hey, having Graham, that again. Anywhere's fine. That was that same plant, wasn't it? All plant look same to me. What? <laughs> Flat? Then there's that infestation. I think I mentioned Snodford had lost his job. Seems the job search hasn't gone well, and with the government cracking down on personal benefits, it was this or no, he's sleeping rough again. Oh, and of course, Mr. Thumbs. Pretty bird. I bloody warned you about that. No, oh, and it begins. Not being Baroness for five minutes and she's already mandating. All right then, what is it the Lady Bombast actually wants us to produce? A single breastplate. Trust Catton of all dwarves to be completely reasonable. I bet she even said please. No, oh, for the love of me, she's even making the damn thing herself. You have people for that now, your bombast. It's all well and good not wanting to be a burden, but it's hardly a mandate of the aristocracy if you demand a new painting and then get out the paints. Learning your new responsibilities from the Ladybird Book of Nobility by any chance? So silly. Now you're off to make a bone ring whilst proud to have a mandate deadline met. Yes, it was such a difficult thing to do, wasn't it? Honestly. Oh, here we go. She's imposed a ban on certain exports. Much more regal. As I suspected, it is breastplates. Now, this isn't as toothless as it seems. This does mean all breastplates, not simply the one that she made. On the other hand, we don't have a surplus of armor, and so wouldn't be in the market to relinquish any. Ah, oh, beggars can't be choosers. Well done, Lady Bombast. No, oh, hang on. What's this? Is that all of our iron? <gasps> I spoke too soon. Here you can see the ridiculous vanity project begun in the name of our Baroness. A huge iron block pit entered via an iron block ramp, open above, and walled with clear glass blocks. The dwarves have started what I thought was going to be a flat clear glass roof, but I have since learned that there are going to be more glass block walls on these, as what her bombast desires most is a big bloody pyramid. I thought you were their god. Don't you control everything they do? The what? No, you can't control dwarves directly, you just nudge them towards things you'd like them to do. Oh, and this is Snodford, everybody. Say hello, Snodford. Hello, Snodford. Hilarious. So, that dwarf kid I saw lugging rocks ran, he's doing that of his own volition? But yes, that little Q-Buck, a strange individual to be sure. Blimey, I think I'll keep them my rim world. I prefer precision to this chaos. It's not as bad as all that. I just believe my dwarves deserve free will. And that is why you spend all your time cleaning up after them. Wouldn't catch me flopping around after my colonists. No, my colonies run like the finest of Swiss watches. Really? Hmm. Well, perhaps you should get back to them then. Yes? Oh, all right. Bye, everyone. Thinks he's so clever because he records himself. Oh, Backseat deity. No, uh, and don't be concerned by the figure watching Cubuck sleep. Uh, that's just Cubuck. 
Chewbuck's father. And here is Doomad, Chewbuck's mother. Uh, when they arrived, she got stuck in burning wood, because no duh. But recently, she's been beavering away... hyena in away? Anyway, she's become something of a dab hand with the bone carving, which is great, because I've been attempting to trick the dwarves into putting some of the rings she's made on, so they stop moaning about acquiring stuff. And here's Cubuck, Cubuck's father. Now he's a fantastic lie maker, at least that's what Doomad says. <laughs> he's not really found his purpose in the fortress as of yet. He's one of those individuals I'm eyeing for a second squad. He's a little rusty, but his combat skills are literally adequate. Oh look, there he goes, off to bed. Now, I believe the three of them are sharing a room at the moment. Uh, yes, I thought so. Well, I'm busy right now, but we'll add separate bedrooms to the to-do list. And this is what I'm busy with. A mine track. Uh, we're watching Thicut place the cart now. Ah, oh, she's so miserable. Horrible to see. Anyway, minecart. I've got a small project in mind for later that will require uniform blocks and we've dug all this shale, but just watching the little sods lug those boulders around hurts my back, so yes, minecart. And here they go all filling it. Oh, hello, Lukey. Getting your hands dirty, I see. Good man, that... Uh, man. No, oh, even little Cubuck is helping. Oh, or playing make believe in the thing. And it's off! Down this freshly dug tunnel. Past the hatches for our sentient zoo and halting at the stockpile here. Where. Uh, why isn't it dumping? Did it dump? No, the boulders are still in the cart. What gives? Oh, you stupid deity. I forgot to add a track stop. Bear with me. Here we go. Oh, wait, hold it. Just paused things for a moment to mention that on top of adding the track stop, I've fiddled with the stockpile so the dwarves don't keep transferring boulders by hand. Only movement of rocks I want to see involves this cart now. And with that said, let's watch it go! And down the ramp... Zoo! Oh no! Oh my! Cuba! Uh, back to playing. <laughs> Look at that! Dwarven resilience! I'd like to see one of Snod's colon cysts survive a hit like that! Wouldn't happen! Not in a million years, but, uh, yes, somebody should take the poor lad down to the hospital anyway. Have him checked over. Now we can get back to the minecart testing. Uh, the dwarves should fill her up with stones, and if we wait a few moments, they'll all bugger off. Hang on. Ah, here. No, that's Catton, ignoring my stockpile commands. Where on my green dimension is everyone? Ah, here we are. One of our warriors, clad in full armour and carrying a final boulder for the cart. I can practically hear his little muscles popping. But of course, he's not going to push the dang mine cart. Oh, finally! Thank you, Locum. Thought my head was going to explode. Ah, you're just moving that spear. I am going to scream. Cog! Cog, you most delectable of bookkeepers, please! Yes! We have movement! Then look at the smooth action. Who knows how many tons of rock being shifted by a pencil pusher. And then we've got the dump. And the kickoff! Ha! How's that for precision? Oh, this is going to save so much time and effort, I can feel it. And down she goes... Oof! Okay, perhaps we should add a cart stop at the bottom to prevent people being forcibly married to the rock wall. Oh no! All that time focused on the mine cart, I completely missed Muthcat's desperate fight for his life. 
Now all that's left is his corpse. His sweaty, sweaty, sweaty corpse. Uh, Kubok's back from the hospital and feeling fine, b uh, by which I mean he's happy to be drunk and terrified after his trauma, uh, though apparently witnessing Mothcat's death by vulture aerobics hasn't affected him, so that's good. Now, his ability to stand has been lost, but it doesn't seem to have stopped him outright, so I'm calling that a win too. Uh, let's take a look at his injuries. Ooh, left foot bone smashed open. Painful, however you slice it, but I can't imagine he won't make a full recovery. I wonder what he's up to, hobbling off to the surface like that. Oh, he's dropping off some rotten meals. Such a diligent little fellow. Battered, broken, bruised, and yet still an integral little cog in the machine of the fortress. And now he's playing in the rotten food, next to the corpse of Muthcat. Could anybody else hear that noise? I've let a little time pass, and now we have a tomb set up for Mothcat next to the one already dug out for Toulon. Similar fare, engraving, statue, etc. I know I made a fuss about it last episode, but I suppose it's not all that bad, having somewhere to go to remember our fallen dwarves. Toothcat and Mullon, you shall be missed. Tell you who apparently really can't be missed, it's bloody Kubuck. Emphasis on bloody, as he's been messing around on the mine track again and taken another pummeling. Luckily, the brunt of the damage was absorbed by his clothes, but it's becoming clear the boy has a death wish. Uh, let's calm things down a little. Here you can see the warriors of the mysterious tongs training, and I'll direct your attention to the fact that they are now all fully armoured. Uh, not only that, but they've all got one or two solid iron spears and a full-length iron shield. The plan, if you hadn't guessed, is to eventually have these ten individuals sharpened to lethal points, so as we can launch them at the Sea of Serpentmen I'm sure are still flooding the cavern. To that end, I'd say they still have a ways to go. So I've switched the squad to constant training, and I don't care how long it takes, we're going to regain access to those damn caverns. If just so our dwarves stop being set upon by desert critters. Oh, come on, Cubuck, get a hobby. No, oh, looks like he has. Mumbling to himself and scribbling runes on shale shards with a piece of charcoal. Let's have a listen in. Dark and cruel, this existence mine, born by the uncaring. Solace, my one true confidant entwined. Bound to the screaming that my eyes can taste. Loss and loss again. Crap, I dropped my charcoal. Uh, loss again, I say. Oh, ass, that's the shield gone. Why don't we have any sodding paper? Okay. I think that's enough corpses for him. Uh, also, unrelatedly. Get away from the mine track! No! <laughs> <sighs> Moving on, I've decided that as Catan's pyramid won't be completed for probably another eight episodes, it's perhaps a good idea to set up some more suitable accommodations down here in the fortress. Plus, I'm hoping that if we get her settled, we might be able to persuade her to scrap the whole stupid idea. I don't want to seem bitter, but I had plans for all that iron, and none of them involved becoming flooring. Now, we're still waiting for the majority of the shale blocks to be crafted up, but I've got a basic idea for how I want it to go, so the dwarves are already smoothing the floor ready for their future carvings. Maybe I'll lock Kolkol in the rooms for a week or two. See how Catan likes them apples. Oh no! Oh no 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 no! It happened. I never imagined it would actually happen. I assumed the wooden cart was simply too light to do any real damage, but it actually happened. Playing on the tracks, little Kubuck was struck by the mine cart as it clattered back to the track stop. Though he survived the initial collision, 
Eventually, the front wheels rolled over him, but the back, with their momentum already deadened, clove him asunder. Today is a dark, dark day. Today, we mourn the passing of the boy known as Kubuk Splashed Ceiling. No pun intended. Though I wouldn't be too sad if I were you. Kubuk's mother certainly hasn't let it dampen her high spirits, and she happened to be actually present at the moment of his passing. Maybe the corpses weren't his only problem. And hey, look! Some new migrants have arrived. You know what they say, when I close a door, I always open a window or something similar. Yes, yes. Pile on in, my beautiful new dwarves. Don't mind how sticky everything is. It's just an aid to gripping. Well, you've got a laugh or you'll cry, right? No, all right, fine. Here's a little memorial to the adorable little nitwit. I was going to call it Kubuk's End, but I thought that'd be in bad taste. <laughs> if you're sensing that I'm winding down to the end, then good instincts, because that's precisely what I'm doing. I'm not sure if it's clear yet, but although I have a broad idea for what I'm hoping to achieve, generally the dwarves dictate what you'll be watching episode to episode. Uh, case in point, I was not planning on painting the fortress red today. Now, of course I could have worked my mysterious ways, but frankly, based on his parents' response, I think the boy might be better off. His own father had positive thoughts naming him an acquaintance for me's sake. Uh, so yes, we'll leave little Kubuk rest in his new tomb here, adorned with a little statue of a hamster, because I guess I'm just a big softy at heart. I take it I don't need to mention who the larger tomb is for, nor, I think, do I need to note why I've planned for the tomb system to be so easy to add to. It's dangerous work to be a dwarf! But yes, with that said, I think it's time for us to part ways again for another fortnight. Anu Zeshon, you most wonderful of individuals. Anu Zeshon. Snod, it's been four hours. I don't want to spend the rest of the afternoon manifesting hot water into the tank, and I really need to pee. Ah. <sighs> I'm sorry I said Rimworld was the nickname you had in high school. Will you get out of the bathroom now? It's not fun!